All right, for segment two today, we have the one and only James Grimm Desborough, writer of such amazing content as Blood with an exclamation point. <laughs> the Gore series. Uh, what, what else do I remember? Oh my God. Uh, Grim Dark, which we'll probably look at maybe for a moment today. Uh, and of course, Whitechester, Prison City of the Damned. And if it wasn't for um, oh, the old geek, I would have pronounced that ye. Because <laughs> I'm American. <laughs> but I uh, want to welcome uh, Grim for being here. Of course, I've got to do my proclivities beforehand. You guys know what this is. And I, I am actually going to have some commentary on RP Gate today, a little bit uh, before Grim comes in. And I don't want to wait too long, but uh, I feel some things need to be said. So we believe that role-playing games should take place in fantastic worlds, that the focus of the game should be on role-playing and having a good time. The core values of hashtag RP Gate and any good tabletop group are escapism not representation Asian, Asian. entertainment over activism and natural organic inclusion not forced diversity and that's the one we're going to focus on for just a moment the charity we support is the wounded warrior project national nonpartisan organization whose mission is to honor and empower wounded warriors somebody's like why do you do the wounded warrior project you know that's not global right well it could be global and heathen dog and i were both in the united states air force i know people that were affected and helped by Wounded Warrior Project. That's why. And please refer to the description below for the link to where you can hopefully make your tax deductible donation. And I'm just going to breeze through the schedule. That's what it is. And there we go. Subscribe, like, share. All right. So here, here's, here's what I've got to talk about. So before I bring Grim in here, just want to point out that I received more than a normal amount of, uh, of negative messages about having Grim on. Most of them were from my side of the aisle. Some of them are actually from the other side, not knowing who I am, apparently. Um, just to be upfront, yes, Grim and I disagree politically. Very much so. But this isn't a political show. Grim doesn't put that in his games. This is why Grim is welcome here anytime he wants. I've had some of the religious types out there see degeneracy. But Grim doesn't make you play his way. He doesn't try to change your games remove your traditions, cancel your tropes. He just wants to create his own. And he can come in here and counter this or, or you know, add to this if he wants later. I'm, I just want to express this for you folks. There's no reason. To say, Did you know that he's a leftist that likes blah, 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 blah? Yes, I'm very well aware of it. <laughs> okay? We just don't talk politics. You have to understand, he adds to the hobby. He doesn't take from it. He's not trying to shut you down. He's not trying to put you in a box. He's not trying to push you out. He's trying to add to it. And if I choose to play what he writes, I do. And if I choose not to, we just go our separate ways in that regard. Stop acting like I shouldn't have him on because he doesn't is to have your acceptable view. Okay. At one point, Grim didn't take my bait. I baited him once. <laughs> I remember this. And his response was, uh, I don't engage in that kind of disparaging commentary or something to that point. He didn't attack me. He took the responsibility for himself saying he doesn't do these things. You folks out there are attacking people. Some could accuse me of that. I, I accept that. I'm not going to attack Grim. So stop sending me messages about that he's on the wrong side of whatever. Because I don't care as long as he doesn't put it in his games. And this is the RP gate thing. This tells me that you do not understand what hashtag RP gate is. And you really need to. It's escapism, not representation. I don't, and again, he can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't ever remember hearing uh, Grimm say, oh, we've got to put this in, we've got to put that in, we've got to put, to, to hit some sort of uh, uh, inclusion factor. Entertainment over activism. It, if anything, his games are highly entertaining because he hits on subjects that might be a little more emotional. And what does entertainment do? It hits you in the emotion nerve. Scientific, go look it up. It's an emotion nerve. You can find it. <laughs> and lastly, uh, uh, natural, organic inclusion. Grimm is way more inclusive than I am. By leaps and bounds, he's more inclusive than I am. And I've never once heard Grimm say exclude somebody. I have said exclude people. So if you don't understand it, that, that this is the epitome of organic inclusion, having somebody on the show who is diametrically opposite to me in like every way, shape, or form when it comes to politics, then I don't know what you're doing here. 
and you don't understand hashtag RPGate, and you really need to figure it out because those are the core values of gaming. Now, with that, I wanted to have that without anybody else on here, just me to you. I'm going to bring Victor and Grim in. And then if Grim wants to add to that, he can, because I'm never going to say something about somebody where they can't back themselves up or tell me I'm an idiot. So let's get Victor first and then get Grim in there. How are you doing today, Grim? All right. Oh, I was surprised to hear that, actually. Uh, was, I, was I wrong about anything? Um... <laughs> I mean, I'm wrong about a lot of I, stuff, but I mean specifically I, then. <laughs> I think I've done a couple of things that are political. Um, I've done things that are about politics, but that's different. That's mm -hmm. not the same thing as being political. I guess my little mini game, The Little Grey Book, is political. Um, okay, but okay. It's... I, I guess maybe I should have been clearer because that's a good point. But like in Whitechester, is there anything... Okay, outside the historical concept, which we will get to, uh, <laughs> is there anything that's like, do you have any sort of activism politically in there? No. Okay. I mean, I'm, in, I'm interested in the period, and it is a period of great radicalism in England. So I've reflected that in the text, mm -hmm. and I have a certain degree of personal admiration for a lot of the, the groups that were active back then. Um, but a lot of that was tied up with religion, and I'm an atheist. So, <laughs> yeah, I can still admire something without uh, agreeing with it 100% or, or whatever. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and so I don't want to dwell on that too much more. I just want to make sure that you, you get to have your say when I'm talking about you. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I've, I've done a couple of more political things, but they tend to be about particular points rather than teams. Mm -hmm. So the, the Little Grey Book is about how, if you're under scrutiny whether it be from left or right or anywhere, all points in between. Someone can always find something wrong with what you're doing, no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. That's that's what that game is about. Um, and I did Imagination, which isn't political exactly. It's about uh, mental health. Mental health support is obviously an issue dear to my heart, like your support for the military charities mm -hmm. is. Um, and that's only political in the way that it interacts with policy in various countries, which most don't support mental health assistance very well at all. So I uh, guess you could call that political. But um, I'm not explicit. I mean, I, my worldview affects what I write, but I'm not I trying to convert anybody. I think that's anybody. every human being, though. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think... I well, know, but, look, sorry, go ahead. You know, I'm, just, I'm just surprised that you had pushback and from the other side i'm used to my own team coming after me right <laughs> yeah I, I, got, um, I got more messages saying that you support some sort of nazi and pardon me for using these terms here but i'm going to use them and i'm not afraid of youtube because it's what was said and some quote-unquote homo agenda yada yada i'm like i don't care <laughs> like, uh, um, like like what does that have to do with gaming like okay so i think some people uh, are upset with me because i support vaccines and you know basic public health processes but i did almost die during lockdown <laughs> and um i'm very vulnerable to respiratory infections and things so i think i'm entitled to be more worried about that than some people um and the homo agenda thing it's just i find a lot of the hysteria about drag absurd because i come from the uk and it's a big long strand throughout our comedy history of men dressing up as women in the services uh, male drag shows would go around to entertain the troops in the world wars uh, every Christmas we have pantomime which is pantomime dames which are usually famous gay comedians dressed up as women so I just find the whole thing faintly ridiculous so that's, fair enough that, that's that it's a cultural thing <laughs> sure sure uh, I, I'm not I'm not and this isn't me like shut you up or anything like that I just don't want to address that here because I want no, to no, the game no, stuff. No, no, um, no. I so, just, but but we covered I I a game called. Myself a bit, what, what was what was that name of that, that game we covered? That at first we weren't sure of satire. By the time we were done, we a uh, Shadow of Mog. I don't know if you know. I don't, uh, I don't know that one. Uh, a former Modifius employee uh, created a game called Shadow of Mog. Apparently, you guys have a PM or something over there. What do you guys MP? Uh, uh, that name Mog, and he did not like that oh, guy for some reason. Yes, and, and uh, <laughs> the entirety of the book was was going after him. And like, I don't get yeah. any of this because it's 
This sounds UK-ish to me. <laughs> yeah, J- Jacob Rees-Mogg. He's the honourable member for the 19th century. Okay. <laughs> is what we affectionately call him. He's very old-fashioned. He had a nanny. He looks like a haunted pencil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we can cover political stuff, but let's let's uh, actually let you segue because you did a moment ago. Um, how are you feeling? How has your health been? Uh, it's better. Um, I'm finally on some uh, s- some additional meds, which took forever because we've had strikes and COVID and and all of that. So it's taken a very long time to get onto a proper medical regimen. It's uh, it's early days now, but it seems like my blood pressure's better and my brain isn't going to explode at some point. So. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm doing doing a lot better. That's yeah. awesome. That's good. And uh, outside of writing books and I don't know entertaining folks on this week in geek with T-shirt historian. Look at that. I plugged you again, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what have you been up to? Uh, running well, playing in a game every other week with T-shirt as well on his channel. Okay. He's running Scarlet Heroes at the moment, and then on the opposite weeks, I'm running like one shots, maybe two shots of everything I haven't played from my enormous collection of games. So I should we... do that at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of games back there. Uh, so we've I'm done late. Barbarians of Lemuria and we've done Doe Pilgrims of the Flying Temple um, and something else, which I can't even remember. So that must have been okay, a very Grimm's looking back into the stars. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I keep my shit. <laughs> What? Well, no, I'm definitely glad to hear that you're feeling better. Um, you know, obviously it took a little longer to get White Chester out because of that, but I don't think, I mean, and if somebody did, that sucks on their part, but nobody that I know uh, is complaining that it was taking too long or anything. So. Uh, a couple of people did. Um, it's always one, like, right? People are like that about Kraven. And one of them then found out what had happened to me and was, oh my God, I'm so sorry. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that was okay. So, uh, real, real quickly, the PDF for it, I realized I didn't have it. Is that through Lulu? For Whitechester. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I don't have it. You know, I got banned from Lulu, right? No. <laughs> Wasn't that for printing books? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know why you've had that problem. I haven't. And, um, you, look, I know a ton of people that still use Lulu to print out books. And and one one other facet: the book that I was trying to print out, I have a written. Well, it's actually on the website. I have a written document that says you are allowed to print out this book. <laughs> yeah. And Lulu terminated my account. So that, yeah, that's why I don't have a, well, I do yeah. now and sh- shouldn't tell anybody this, but uh, I'm going to blame Victor. Victor got, got me a copy. So if there's anything throughout this discussion here that, uh, look, I backed it. I can show my, where's my, oh, mine's yeah. my backpack. Hey, uh, I paid for it. So <laughs> um, it's for me to do it what I want. <laughs> if uh, uh, if there's anything that we want to talk about that's in there that you want to show, let me know and I'll go to that page and so forth. Because okay. I, I think one uh, of the things that I really want to do today is I know a lot of these answers, but but the questions come up. So we'll, we'll ask questions about the book. We'll ask questions about the idea of the campaign. Uh, you know, per our discussion, we'll have, uh, you know, we'll talk about horror in general. So we're, we're going to hit on a lot of different topics here uh, with regard to this. But the number one thing that I want to make sure is that when we leave here today, <coughs> people in chat have their questions answered and they're excited about the book and that you, Grim, feel that, hey, we covered it and we said everything that needs to be said about it so that uh, that people can go and buy it. Yeah. Uh, regarding print on demand, mm-hmm. there is a new British company setting up to do print on demand at the moment they only do spec printing um but they're gonna contact me when they've got it set up and let me use it to do some test runs and things and uh that printing company prints adult material as well as everything else so a lot of the problems that we've had with lulu should go away (laughs) if they can make lulu has problems with well i guess it is america lulu is a a little puritanical it's yeah, they're occasionally a little bit uh, censorious, and their prices have been going up really high. This new company looks like their prices should be below those of Lulu. So okay. I can't say much more at the moment, but I'm in talks with them, and hopefully even for give international us a- shipping. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I'm in talks with them. Hopefully, we'll find out. So, and, and it will work out, but I, I don't want to get anyone's hopes up too much just yet. It'd be good to have a competitor to Lulu in the space. Heck yeah. 
I'm like, hey, I'm in. If I can print out a book over there, and even if I have to show, I have a document saying I'm allowed to print it out. I'm in. <laughs> I have a ton of PDFs that I want to print out because I don't do, I don't like PDFs. Like I get the the good parts about you can search them, and obviously we use them here to show off, you know. But when yeah. I'm reading, like when I read Whitechester. I didn't do it through a PDF. I did it through the book because that's just, I'm old. I, that's how I like yeah. to do it. Um, well, that's something we can talk about. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, so let, let's just start off. Let's, let's start talking about the, the Whitechester campaign, so to speak. And the, the question I didn't ask it this pointedly, but somebody in my Discord did, and I thought it was funny. So I'm just going to bring it up. <laughs> what is the point of Whitechester? Why would adventurers go there? And, and this is my favorite one. Is some king going to say, I forgot my favorite shoes. Here's 2K gold pieces to go find them. <laughs> so, so, so in an overview, like what, what is Whitechester about? Okay. Um, it's about survival against the odds. Um, it's about the aftermath of a truly ruinous period in English history. Like this, this English Civil War killed as many men as the plague did, right? Um, a whole generation of young men was wiped out. A whole generation of the nobility was wiped out, and a lot of the newly formed middle classes as well. Uh, this was the time when the plague came back. Uh, London lost a third of its population to the plague, and this was after the, the Civil War. Uh, we brought the monarchy back after an experiment with republicanism that didn't was go... a pretty short experiment though yeah didn't go terribly well <laughs> <laughs> um yeah we kind of screwed that one up um and it's a period that's interesting to me because my family's history is tied into a lot of that um hmm. we married into cromwell's family okay. and uh <laughs> we used to run like a fifth of the country <laughs> under cromwell uh, until the restoration. So it's just a fascinating period. And it's also, it, it, it's a black powder period. It's it's the early modern period. So that's a bit different to normal fantasy. Um, so it's just, it's just interesting from all kinds of different directions. It's when Newton was coming up with all of his stuff and the Royal Society was formed by, by Charles II. So that was all the new science and philosophy mm -hmm. as to why adventurers would get involved, right? The, the, so the, the, the basic by the book setup is that you are prisoners who get thrown in here right? <laughs> because you've done something naughty. You're a thief or a blasphemer, or you looked at the king when you shouldn't, or you know, whatever, whatever reason it might be, or you might be some radicals left over from the English civil war or mercenaries who killed the wrong person or a highwayman or a witch or, or whatever you get, you get bunged in the city. Yeah. You're the zombies problem now. Yeah, like we used to transport people to Australia, and the Australia is probably worse than a city full of the undead. So, <laughs> so that that's one aspect. Also, okay. um, it's quite a big city for the time, even though it's only the central section that was walled in, and there were wealthy families there. Um, the area in which it's set was a center for the wool trade and felt and uh, early industrial revolution stuff. Very early industrial revolution stuff. So there's a lot of money and a lot of goods and there will have been local nobility and so on. So they might want you to go in to get their stuff back. You so, know, so the king will say, I forgot my favorite shoes in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, or a duke or whatever might say, well, okay, I own this property, but the deeds to that are in my old house, which is in the city and it's overrun and I can't get the deeds. So I can't prove my ownership. And, yeah, this baron over the way, he's he's contesting it with me and it looks like the court's going to take his side. I need you to go in there and do it. Or just that it's a city full of unholy, evil things and you're a, a good Christian Solomon Cain ripoff and want to go and stop it. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, that sounds so, awesome. <laughs> well, one of the things that, that you were pointing out there was like the historical context and uh, I wish I had my book with me. I left it in my backpack. Um is that you put this history so much of what you said right there is like i read that i read that i read that yep i mean you put a lot of history in there so where does the real history end and the fantasy portion begin in your book so the the conceit of the book is that history runs pretty much as it really was 
up until the point things things go go off kilter. Um, but you know, genuine magic was always there in the background. So ritual magicians actually had power. Uh, famous witches and wise women who wrote predictions and so on, they will have really had power. It doesn't actually change that much because that's what people thought at the time. You know, that uh, that the old women who lived on the edge of the town, they were off sporting with devils and having sex with goats in the woods and shit like that. They thought that was what was going on. So the difference is that it is actually going on <laughs> in, in this world. But it's all hidden away. It's all in the background. You know, it's 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 not overt until this comet comes along. It's like the I added an extra comet, but there were actually two or three comets leading up to the time, which is a bit. Oh my weird. god! How could you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we just have an extra comet that at least seems to be what sets everything off. Okay, it's funny how you, your answers end right where my next question begins because I was going <laughs> to ask. So, so, how did the dead rise? I mean, or, or is that part of the mystery of Whitechester that you don't know, or maybe you find out inside? So, there's no absolute definitive answer. Um, I have my own interpretation, which the book kind of leads towards, but there's room for you to interpret it whichever way you want. There evidence within the city that people knew the comet was coming and what kind of effect it would have. There are suggestions that the fragments of the comet that fell to Earth have various effects and do various things. But it's questionable how much of that is the comet itself or whether the comet was a harbinger of some kind of supernatural shift in the world or whether it's down to the various magicians and ne'er-do-wells who were living in the city at the mm -hmm. time anyway. But this yeah. did happen across the world to a lesser extent, but mostly in England and mostly in this city. Or those old ladies who were fornicating with goats caused it. Yeah, e easily <laughs> could have been them. <laughs> or it could be judgment from God upon the world. I mean, so this takes place in 1668, but 1666, obviously 666, number of the beast, mm -hmm. People thought that was going to be the end of the world. And to people in England, it did seem like the end of the world because we had the plague, Great Fire of London, went to war with the Dutch. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that was uh, your mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> Well, we we did pretty much kick your ass for a while, so yeah. You did. You did <laughs> that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the Dutch did used to actually be a, a naval power, right? I mean, the yeah. Dutch opened up Japan. Yep. Thank you, honey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so what, what I'm hearing from that, and this is something I'll get to when we talk about like the content of the book, was that uh, this is just another way of having enough information out there for you to have a basis. But I could run it one way. You could run it another way. Victor could run it a third way. And it's still all within the premise of the book. I mean, we're not even talking coloring outside the lines. We're still coloring within the lines because there's a lot of, uh, I don't say call it murkiness. That sounds bad. But but a lot of uh, disambiguity. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Wiggle room. Perfect. Uh, you know, for somebody to take the campaign the direction that uh, he or she wants to. So. I mean, yeah. I like that. And that's one of the things that I picked up on the book as I was reading it. And to answer the T-shirt historian's question, no, I didn't read that part. I have not actually read it cover to cover. <laughs> I, I read <laughs> the beginning and then I started going through the different sections and, uh, you know, at focusing on different parts. And then I looked at the, the creatures at the end. Um, but the, the, la the last question I have in this aspect of it, and then I'll turn it over to Victor for his question. This is on the, the campaign aspect is, uh, is the book, only a prison city or does it include the outside uh, areas and territories and, and kind of the way the question was worded was uh is this something that somebody can just plug into any old campaign or is this something they've kind of got to build to with the right things going on around it so you could plug it into any campaign um i mean all the background stuff you've read it it's all front loaded at the beginning mm -hmm. right but the city itself mostly it doesn't come up that much it's just it just informs what's there it's not vital to it so you could easily transport this to a slightly later period in the east coast of america perhaps you could transplant the city there make it a wooden stockade or something in, instead salem, of salem massachusetts yeah 
Um, it could easily be plugged in pretty much anywhere in Europe in the 17th century um, or in a fantasy world, though it is inclined to more of that early modern feel. So that Lamentations of the Flame Princess sort of time period where you do have black powder firearms and things. It's slightly more difficult to remove that aspect from it, I think. And it okay. wouldn't really plug into a high magic world very well. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. I, uh, you definitely have guns, and that's something that I shy away from in games, uh, fa in my fantasy games. But I'm also not a high magic person. I mean, but would you? What would you accept? Not accept. How would you take the argument that people told me? Well, all guns are are just scientific magic. The, the flip side is, says all magic is it's just guns without the you know the smoke. Um. So magic works by breaking the laws of reality in certain limited ways. Different games take different approaches to that. It may be very process-oriented, and the magic may follow its own internal consistency of power and preparation and, uh, and all of that, whereas scientific weapons follow principles, by and large, that we're all familiar with um, in, in the real world. For for me, the thing the thing about black powder weapons is they take so fucking long to load, right? <laughs> yeah. And in this setting, they're really loud. And the last thing you want to do is draw the attention of the undead hordes, who a lot of the time aren't going to feel it very much when you shoot them anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and the the big clouds of smoke cause mm -hmm. all manner of problems as well. So, um, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think anything up to the flintlock is too much of a problem. Once you get into sort of bolt action stuff, that's a bit, that's too far, I think. Well, I should save this for the content section. I'll just put a little spoiler well, out there for folks. Well, there he's goes got, my idea. <laughs> he, he's got rules for all of this in the book. So we're still talking about things that I have read. So everything he said so far in the book. Uh, so uh, go ahead, go ahead, Victor. If you got any campaign oriented questions, uh, go ahead and ask him. Um, well, not so much campaign. My my questions are all basically about your design process and stuff like that. So, if you want to like continue about the campaign, okay. I'll I'll leave it to yeah, you. That's now. definitely I definitely want to get into that, but I want to kind of yeah. put that more towards yeah. the end as we're off the t specific topic of the book. Yeah. All right. So again, it's on the cover, but I'm gonna ask the question because this is the number one question I got. Is the book Five E and OSR compatible? Yes, and Borg. Borg. Okay. Um, so ugh, the only bit you really need to worry about in terms of compatibility, um, cause everything else you can just pull out of your ass or yeah, otherwise deal with the only thing you really need to worry about with compatibility is the monsters. Okay. Oh, do you want me to get the PDF uh, up here? I can show so everybody. There, there's a monster. Sure. But what page is that? Uh, 466. All right. 466. Probably going to be off by a little bit, but Hey, whatever. Uh, yeah. All right, let's show this. Present, share screen, and boom. And I can zoom in on it. So Yeah. Okay, so if you take a look at um, one of the clockworks, right, or okay. the child zombie, perhaps. Can I zoom okay. in? More? Well, I don't want to zoom in too much because then they won't see it all, but there we go. Out, out, out a little bit so we can Oop. just see the whole entry. Okay. Right, so you've got your basic 5E e stats mm -hmm. at the top, right, and then the modifications for the other systems – are called out at the bottom, right? So grimdark rules, you use ba the basic 5e e stat block, but those are additional things or changes that override right it. Yeah, speak of the devil, <laughs> right? Um, I use Lamentations as my, as my basis because it, or a lot of the work's already done, but that's pretty compatible with any old school game you care to mention. And plus the stat blocks are really short, so that helps. And then Morkborg, you don't need much in the way of of details either so that's <laughs> that's there weirdly um <laughs> someone gave me a bad review the other day i'm a bit butthurt about it and one of the things he complained about was the stat blocks saying that having it for all these different systems really bloated the book i'm like what three four sentences tacked on the end of a normal stat block bloats the book yeah no. <laughs> what you on about mush yeah I, I, <laughs> that's weird because first of all maybe, maybe i'm weird but i like thick books i also like options because yeah, in the in the nineties, I played AD and D Second Edition, 
But then I converted over to Earth Dawn. You know, it would have been awesome if a lot of those monsters compendiums would have been converted to Earth Dawn. Nowadays, we have more modern games, whether it's Lamentations for OSR or Your Grim Dark, Morkberg, which I'm not a huge fan of myself. I like other free league games, but I get it because because the motif of the setting. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Why why wouldn't you want those in the book? That that's almost like saying for me saying, well, I hate five E, so you have five E stat blocks in there, so I don't like your book. <laughs> what? Yeah, doesn't make any sense. There are there are people like that, sadly. Oh well, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, but I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more for folks who are watching phones and so forth later, just so they can. And I'll, I'll scroll down. But there you can see it. Uh, it says what it is. Armor class with a U because he's British. Get over it. <laughs> yep. No, the one that always drives me nuts, nuts is civilization. I hate the Z's changing to S's. That's the one that breaks my brain. I can handle all the other stuff. But uh, anyway, and there you go. That That's it. It's like, oh, look at that. It's bold face Grimdark. You can stop before then if you want to. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so that's good. If anything else you want to show off from the book, please, by all means, that's why I have the PDF okay. ready to go here. Um, in I fact, no, no, I am going to bring that back up to show some. And then I got a couple of chats that we'll we'll go through. Uh, so people had questions. Uh, look at that. Ah, it's like I haven't done this before. Is that, boom. Let's um, <laughs> let's zoom back out. Let's let's go to the beginning of the book, because I'm going to show without reading it. We're going to show. There we go. Some of that history that we were talking about, so you can see that it's there. Come on, aren't you going to show it? What? I sometimes have to wait for my computer on these PDFs. Or is I'm it just, nope, just not doing it? All right. The um, PDFs are very laggy. Yeah, it gets weird sometimes. So, uh, without again, without stopping to talk about any of this necessarily, unless you really think that there's a point that needs to be brought up, um, you've got the history of it. Uh, I thought some of it was very interesting, uh, and that's weird because I don't care about the time period, but as I was reading through this, I was like, oh, okay, that starts to make more sense but to me. A lot, of it, a lot of it relates to the early American colonial period mm -hmm. because a lot of the fanatics and the idealists and so on that were left over after the English Civil War, after the Restoration, um, ran away to the States. So. I mean, the Quakers are a big one for the United States, right? Yep, yep. And they make good oats. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, they make some good oats. Uh, got got uh, personalities in here you could read about. I learned a lot about, about that. Boy, I didn't know anything about Boyle in this regard. Like, I yeah. knew him for uh, for his scientific stuff, but like this, the 24 Wish, like, oh, and it, so it's, Those were I'm, things that he he wanted and thought were within the scope of natural philosophy, and yeah, you can interpret them in a way that suggests that we've maybe accomplished quite a lot of them. Maybe <laughs> it depends. <laughs> it depends on some views here, but yeah. Uh, so yeah. quick firearms rules. There you go. Notice it says quick firearms rules, and when I read it, I agreed. It's like okay, so there you mm -hmm. go. Now you can put the firearms in your games. You also talk in here, you do talk in the book about it being better for a low magic setting. Yeah. I'm not going to counter it, but I am going to ask the question. Again, because it came up. I run 5e and I run 5e as is. How would I mash this into my game and I don't want to limit somebody from, say, playing a warlock or playing D&D? My, my response was quickly was just, well, look at the Grim Dark rules or look at the 5e hardcore uh, mode rules. Those will probably help you out. But is that the right answer? Or is there something better? Yeah, that would work. Um, I don't think you can allow clerics. <laughs> I just don't, don't think it's going to work with clerics in it. Um, Paladin maybe might be all right because they've got more limited powers. If you wanted to do something really quick to limit it, say that you can only cast spells at their lowest level, so you can't spend a higher slot, or you can spend a higher slot, but the spell only takes effect at the lowest level, that would keep the magic under control a, a little bit. Um, yeah, and I would start people from the lowest possible level <laughs> to, uh, okay. uh, to start the game. Uh, instead of limiting it, what about the opposite way, making it more high fantasy? So... You know, uh, you, you might be a warlock, you might be a cleric, but meanwhile, there's also an undead dragon living in the clock tower, you know, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that's, that's the other yeah. way you could go is, is yeah. power things up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So so I, I what I mentioned was very similarly to what you said about uh, black powder weapons. It goes boom and draws attention. If you turn 15 zombies, that magical, that we'll call it that holy energy, might attract other zombies to want to eat your brains. 
And of course, I'm being yep. facetious when I say, but, but you get what I'm saying. It's, a, it's that walking dead horde thing where it's like, okay, you might have scared away a couple of zombies, but now the masses are coming in. Yeah, and when they form hordes mm -hmm. and swarms, they're, they're really dangerous. <laughs> you go talk about Grimdark right there. And even have a how to use the book. Uh, and, and I thought all of this was, was good stuff. I, I did, oh. and, I, and, and I mean that. Now, I did have a question about the... Go ahead, Victor. You... I, I saw something in the um, um, inspirations. Okay. Somebody just mentioned, asked in the chat if you've ever read The Baroque Cycle by um, Stevenson, and it literally says there on the, on the first yeah. line. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that, that answers that question from the chat. <laughs> yeah, I haven't read all of them, but I've read yeah. uh, some of them, and they seem to fit. So. And now, this is because I'm not a history nerd. Is this actually word for word, or is this something that you modified? That's word for word, uh, apart from I broke up some of the lines and so on to make it a bit more readable. Okay. Um, but that's that's word for word. Um, Excellent. I just wanted to include something that encapsulated the politics of the time um, from the people of the time. And so in some regard, that turns it into more of a setting book than just something you throw in like like an oversized mega dungeon module yeah to a degree i mean i'm i'm a historian in an amateur basis i mean i studied it at, uh, at school and college pretty extensively and i've always had an interest in history and particularly in this period um so i, I wanted to include some of that because because it's interesting Sounds good. Now, I'm not going to dive any deeper into that for now because some of that will come up later. And uh, all right, up there. let's get some of this chat here. Uh, first of all, weird guy. <laughs> uh, he said, politics, huh? I can start this. The most politically charged question at TTRPGs, ascending versus descending armor class. The first guy <laughs> in that cat fight. Uh, thank you for the $10, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't particularly care whatever floats your boat. <laughs> See? I just, I, I actually have it written into my notes for some of the questions that I ask. I know you're going to say whatever you want to do, but I want to know what your intent is. We haven't got there yet. Though, uh, well, for me, I think then it's better to have, need to need to roll higher. It's just, it feels yeah. like that's what you should do. Yeah. But I like I, ascending. I'm... It goes well with magical dwarfs. <laughs> For those who don't know, that was that was a discussion that happened on a Friday Night Chill Stream a few weeks ago where Victor uh, decided to try to spin me up. Kind of worked. Um, but the, <laughs> no, my, my thing is this, and, and I've said it a lot on Friday Chill Stream, I'll say it here. I fully accept that Ascending Armor class is more intuitive. And if you prefer Ascending Armor class, the only time I get butt hurt is when they're like, oh my God, it's so difficult. It makes the game suck, blah, blah, blah. Then I'm like, okay, you can't do second grade math and you're having this kind of reaction to it. <laughs> no. You know, that, that's where I draw the line. If you're just like, yeah. you know what? I just prefer basic fantasy because the ascending armor or whatever, because of ascending armor class, you I, I you get two thumbs up for me. I get that. Just don't come like, oh, geez, you play that Thacko stuff? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think because it's counterintuitive, it feels more difficult than it actually is because it just takes that extra moment for your brain to take over. Fair enough. I, I and there's the there's the broke question. I had that one start, yeah. so uh, got that one answered. So we'll move on to uh, what we have here. I'm getting a very Games Workshop Mordheim vibe from the book. Yeah, so I was worried about that uh, uh -oh. going into it, but it's I th I think it's sufficiently different. Um, Mordheim's great. Don't get me wrong. Um, and you could definitely raid a bunch of Mordheim stuff for ideas and miniatures. Uh, more time would be great to get miniatures to play this with. Um, so, so by all means. But I, I never actually bought Mordheim, and I didn't read it until I was about halfway through the process of, of this book. I was aware of it. The real thing that I was worried about... Um, so I originally had the idea for this back in 2013, and I had made a start on writing it. And then 2000 AD, the anthology science fiction comic, um, put out a story called Defoe 1666, which was almost exactly the same idea. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I see. I think I remembered you making a post or something about that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So um, I kind of I went, ah, oh, fuck, and sat mm -hmm. on the idea for all these years because um, I didn't want people to think I was I was ripping that off, and that comic series has kind of jumped the shark and gone out of control and it's now sufficiently different to what 
I'm doing that I felt okay to put the put the game book out. Okay. Uh, this is not really a question, but I do appreciate the use of minimal art and just packing as much information in the pages as possible. I second that, sir. Like, don't get me wrong, a little bit of art is good, but uh, I know we've had some discussions on the Friday Chill stream about, oh, I have to have art in my game. And I don't. I buy games with crap art. I'll still call it crap art or minimal art. I like information. Flip side. I also don't like so much text that that 90% of it I don't need to read. And this book does not have that. This book's full far and everything that I've read, the information is meaningful either for understanding the premise or for understanding your location. Yeah. Um, the only way in which I would have wanted to have more art in it would be to have more maps of the locations and the and the rooms and so on. It just wasn't practically possible to either get that amount of artwork done or to put it into a book, which I'd set a hard limit of 500 pages on. Uh oh, um, did you break that? Oh, okay, okay. Those, no. that, 502, that 502 includes the cover. I got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, now, one of the guys who stepped in to help me when I, when I got ill and complete the project has done a bunch of building plans, which you can now get from my website or from drive through or... Oh, wherever else you okay. normally get your gaming stuff so um you there are some floor plans and things now and two introductory adventures that i wrote as well i did not uh, i actually didn't know about that so i don't have that ready um i will find the link for yeah, you Yeah, if you can get me a link that'd be great and in the meantime we'll move on to uh i was going to ask if it's a setting or are the or are there rules involved as well um it's primarily a setting uh, but there are rules <laughs> where they're needed, <laughs> I think. Mm -hmm. Fair fair enough. And I think when we page through, people can will get uh, that understanding. Uh, I would say it's a source book for whatever type of game you play. That, that's yeah. the way I look at it. Legion Myth, I made the mob rules for the game. I guarantee they'll tear your character apart. All right. Well, I don't yeah. think I read those yeah. yet, so I haven't read your nonsense, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. T-shirt's one of the people who stepped in to help. Uh, a whole bunch of people did. Um, and it's just that's something that's great about the RPG community, I think. Yeah, people just st stepped up when I was having a hard time, and that was that was fantastic. That's awesome. I'm, I'm glad to hear. I mean, obviously, you know, you know, going back to the beginning of this, most of us knew that that you were having the health issues and obviously wishing you the best, you know, through that. And that's why, again, I don't, I don't know anybody that complained about the book being late, but the fact that people did step in to, to help like that, that yeah, hundred percent, you know, when people say that, Oh, diversity, inclusion, yada, yada. And I'm not trying to segue this into something weird, but uh, no, it's always been there. So I don't understand a lot of the discussions we've been having over the four or five years about I'm finally feel welcome at a table. What? <laughs> Grim would have been at my table in high school. We just wouldn't have talked after school, you know, whatever. Like, like, <laughs> you know, it's just, there would have been, I don't know. I, I don't get it. So that, that's great to hear. Uh, uh, if you give me your email address on Discord, I'll send you a download to the. Oh, okay. I was, I was going to, do you have a link that, or do people have to own the book in order to get that? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, let me do that real quick. So, hey, Victor, you, this is your time to fill in the gap. Yeah. <laughs> fill the dead air. Uh, so, so my main question is, uh, I've got two and they kind of look similar, but uh, my main question is, uh, what was your design process for this? Like, is it all just like, you know, spending way too many hours on Wikipedia? Did you actually visit libraries and like read through old dusty books and manuscripts? <laughs> did, you walk the, did you walk the streets of Westchester to like get a feel for like the layout, like for, like what kind of like buildings and areas you want to showcase? Like stuff like that. Okay, let me just get this file sent off, and then I'll yeah. do my best to give a comprehensive answer to that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, He's thinking about it. I was like, huh, that's a lot of stuff you just gave me. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's a lot of questions. Um, okay. Is it sending? Is it? Are you sending? Sending? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's sent. Okay. Um, right, so what research did I do? basically, uh, to sum, sum up all of that. Um, I'm interested in the period anyway, so I've done a mm -hmm. lot of independent reading um, about it. I ordered some quite expensive um, <laughs> historical sort of revision and study books and things. 
Yeah. Um, there's a reprint of an old, basically, basically what amounts to a catalogue from the period, hmm. which has all kinds of fascinating information on how much things cost at the time. Um, yeah, there's stuff like that. Um, there's those great, I think it's Usborne guides to military uh, equipment, armor, and so on. And so this was a weird period in English military history because it's after the Civil War, but before things were kind of sorted out again. But they had a book on the right period, so I was able to um, make all that kind of authentic. Yeah. Um, read a bunch of books. Uh, I went to college in Winchester, which the city is partially based upon. Mm. Um, so I used to walk around the streets there, spent a lot of time in and around the cathedral um, and the college grounds. There's an old uh, private school there, uh, Winchester College which the school in Whitechester is based on. And I know a lot about the county history. My uh, my grandmother was a teacher and mm. she had a whole bunch of books on local history in like this county in this area. You know, I live in Hampshire. The fictional Whitechester is based in, in Hampshire as well. So that was all very helpful. Uh, yeah, uh, anything and everything um, kind of yeah. kind of put together a lot a lot of reading a lot of study, a lot of stuff I already knew anyway, um, yeah. and experience with these these sort of older parts of England. Yeah, that's cool. Because uh, I, I was just curious, because there's a lot of like authors that like you know write like fiction books and they'll do like crazy research. It's like, oh, this is set in Texas, so I traveled to Texas for a year and just walked around. So I was kind yeah. of curious if you had like a similar approach because this is very historical. It's like based on like a real city. So yeah. Yeah, um, a, f a few things I've kind of changed or played a bit fast and loose with here and there because it it will become dry and boring if you make it completely historical. Yeah. Um, do you know, educational games are terrible for a reason. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> you know? yeah. So I, I've bent things a bit here and there, but yeah. just trying to keep it plausible and in the right yeah. sort of area. I was also curious because I want to do a project based on like Dutch history and myth at some point. So I was, you know, it's kind of good to know what like somebody who's already done something similar, like the, the process they went through. So it's I can kind of yeah. just know that the it. Dutch are a myth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A legion of myths. There were giants in the land in those days. Yeah. Well, there still are. <laughs> we're pretty <laughs> tall. People in Europe, aren't you? Yeah. Though? In the world, actually, I think, technically. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I did feel like a midget when I was there. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Victor, do you have any more questions specifically um, on this portion of it? or my, my second question is kind of more about uh, your general writing process. Like, uh, kind of like how, uh, when you do write, like how many hours a day do you spend on it? Is it like, is it kind of just casual? Like, you know, just you just uh, whittle away at it and it just builds as it goes. Uh, and also... Uh, what kind of stuff do you like writing and what stuff don't you like? Like, I don't like doing tables and stuff. It's very tedious, but you have to. So, you know, it's, it's always fun to hear what like, other people... You guns and you don't like doing tables? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I, I torture myself. <laughs> um, so this wasn't done like my typical projects. Yeah. Uh, I'm normally pretty much an auteur. I prefer to do everything myself mm -hmm. uh, because other people are flakes. <laughs> Yeah. And they don't deliver stuff on time or at all exactly. uh, or whatever else. So this didn't really go like it, like I normally work because I was forced to work with other people and, you know, they stepped to help and I'm, I'm grateful for it, but it's, it's not how I normally work. Um, so do you want me to answer for this one or do you want me to answer in the way that I normally work? Um, normally works actually that works so you can do both if you want yeah, like, yeah, you can do okay. both. love to get in your brain so, for this stuff yeah <laughs> so for this one um the early process is the same for both right i come up with the title i do a, a massive brainstorm i make like a an image board of things that are inspirational um i make note of books i need to reference and read and so on and from that i create a skeleton for the book so title sections subsections as as much as i can think of just down to the titles for all the different sections as as, as high fidelity as i can to what the final book will be and i look at that and i maybe rearrange things or oh, maybe i want all the character creation stuff there and maybe i want the basic background there and the in-depth background later you know so you can move it around by section 
And then I start filling out the flesh on the skeleton. Usually I start at the beginning and work my way along. But then if I get stuck or bored, <laughs> I move on to another section yeah. uh, and then come back again when I'm more ready to, to tackle that. So it gets it gets filled out. Now with this one, uh, I ended up farming out sections to people. Mm -hmm. But I tried to give them like the, the skeleton for the subsection and the ideas that I'd already already noted down. So like, oh, I want this, this, and this to be here. I want the, the feel of this particular building to be along these lines, or this is the story of what happened to the people who lived here. Interpret that how you like, whatever. So give them something to work with, yep. you know, and uh, examples of things that I'd already done. And then I'd leave them to work on a section and I would work on something else between hospital visits and and yep. whatever else that was going on um so yeah over that process the whole thing gradually gets filled out i usually edit as i go along which mm. isn't a particularly good way to do it i don't think yeah. but it's just it's just how i work Same um here. and then i run it section by section through uh something like grammarly um which is good for picking up uh where you've used the wrong spelling of the right word or this, you know, odd, odd issues like that. It's very good at picking up. Then I run it through a text to speech software and I just listen to the whole thing. And it does the cadence sound right. You oh, know, that's interesting. I never considered yeah. that. That is actually a very good idea. Yeah. It is a really good way of picking up that down. where, where, where yeah. you've screwed up the, uh, the, the grammar, the punctuation, um, where you've trailed off in the middle of a sentence or, or yeah, things like that. It, it, I I can't recommend doing that highly enough, right? Because margins are so low, it's often impossible to hire actual editors. Yeah. And the, I found this process to be the next best thing. The self-edit, the um, advanced spell check, grammar check, that for something that's something like Grammarly, other software is available, can do for you, and then text-to-speech. Um, and that will give you results almost as good as paying a professional editor to do things. Yeah. Um, and then I just give it a one last going through. Um, and then as I'm laying it out, I reread the sections again just to be sure, uh, make sure the flow is right. And uh, you know, that, that's it. Then it's done. Nice. Yeah, that is actually very useful uh, information, especially the, the text-to-speech one. And, you know, I, I'm a fledgling creator myself, so... Uh, I, it's I'm always curious to see how more experienced people do things so I could just copy them. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I do, to, sell, uh, I do sell a video course on uh oh nice <laughs> making, uh, yeah. on making and, RPGs. And for one hundred ninety nine ninety nine you can no, <laughs> Yeah. No, it's it's uh twenty dollars actually. There you go. Bad, yeah. and, it, and it talks about that process that you use. Yeah, it's called throughout. RPG design from start to finish. It's only on drive through, but only yeah. because my website won't host files that big. So, <laughs> so you can get it. You can get it from there. It's a whole series. It goes through the whole process, working through mechanics, editing, writing. Tips. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. But, but my problem is, is that I want to. I want to hear from more experienced people, but I'm also very stubborn. So if I don't agree, I'll just throw your advice out, like right away. So you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's 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 a weird mix. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, Screw you. Then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, notice that Grim publishes lots of books. Victor, yeah. What you've got a you've got a tracksuit orc book. And I've I've got a book <laughs> ninety percent finished. <laughs> it's that last ten percent. Yeah. Well, my, my problem, like for me, like people have heard me say for years now, and I didn't even start talking about it until I thought, okay, I'll be done with this thing somewhat soon uh, when I was writing because I used to be a technical editor, technical writer. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm still, I over edit. Like I can spend multiple hours editing sections and not write a thing. And that is my Achilles heel. Yeah. Uh, the thing I the thing I like about using Grammarly is that it lets you set goals for the text. So you can tell it, okay, I'm writing in a casual tone. I'm trying to convey information. Um, and my audience is knowledgeable, and then it will tailor the, the checks and so on to those oh, yeah. those inputs that you put in. So that's quite good. Nice, I've actually yeah. never used well, I've I've used like the free version of Grammarly just to, you know, on occasion to like for I don't know, random blog posts or something like that but i've never actually dove into it 
I'm kind of yeah. like uh, Victor in that one. I'm too stubborn. Like I was an <laughs> editor. I've got a manual style. I don't need all that. You know, I was like, no, I, I... we had it's, a question. It's for pretty you. good, but yeah. Okay. What's the question? Uh, so crafty asked, so was the book designed with a humanocentric campaign in mind or did other fantasy races factor into the creation of the book? So being a, an historical setting, uh, fantasy races didn't really factor into it at all. Um, I did have the idea that you can play a bog standard human, a human who's a who's a prodigy. So, like I was thinking of the the Newtons and the other grand figures of science at the time. So you can play a, a human who's more of a more of a specialist, um, or a human who has been touched by the supernatural in some way. Uh, maybe your mother was a witch, or the fairies left you in exchange for the the child that was supposed to be there. You know, things like that. If you run a more fantastical campaign, sure, you can you can do it anyway. Um, but it's it's not keyed up for that. So you won't find elf NPCs or dwarf NPCs. Well, if I remember uh, correctly, elves different. can't be turned into zombies, can they? I guess it depends uh, on the game you're playing, really. But yeah, yeah. yeah. You could, you could just do orcs and just have them be cockneys. I mean, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> if you hell? played the uh, Zombicide Black Death game, there's zombie orcs in that. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, it's a good, good, <laughs> good game. Yeah. couple of positive comments here. So we got, uh, I'm glad to see Grimm's feeling better. Some live channels again. I miss him on inappropriate characters. I don't know if I do. I, I hate to say that. Sorry, Grimm, but... Uh, I don't, I don't really watch inappropriate characters that much anymore. I'm not against it, but with all the technical issues and with all this, this weird <laughs> venture leaving after five minutes of being on the show, and I can't get that thing off the screen, so hold on. There we go. Um, <laughs> so I accidentally deleted it up here. But uh, uh, I, don't know, I don't really watch inappropriate characters uh, myself anymore. Not against yeah, it, um, so to speak, but, you know. I, I've been on it since for, a, for an interview, I think, uh, around Whitechester when I was crowdfunding for it. Um that went south. I think I sent you some messages on that one too. I was actually <laughs> pissed off on that one for you for no reason, but I was pissed off for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a bit awkward. Um, yeah, I've been trying to be on more shows and things and to put myself out there a bit more. Now I'm now I'm feeling a bit better. Um, I'm not good at self marketing, so I'm actively trying to make an effort to be you know more videos that i'm making more live streams that i'm doing inappropriate characters um i was kind of like the fox news liberal on the panel <laughs> <Yeah>. alan combs <laughs> you know i was too too polite to uh to interrupt or be or be nasty so i towards the end there i was feeling like a bit of a punching bag anyway i've got nothing against any of them venger's a sweet guy mm -hmm. pundit when you get him away from his soapbox he's perfectly lovely fella mm -hmm. yeah he, he just plays a heel on tv <laughs> so <laughs> you know i just I, I don't think it's it's suitable for me anymore um uh, i like t-shirts panel i like going on that might not have the audience but it's a lot of fun to hang out and, and shoot the shit about all kinds of pop culture stuff yep no, I, I agree with that my only issue with t-shirts panel sometimes i think it's too big <laughs> like, uh, I mean, it's just for me, it's like, oh, uh, who's talking now? Because I usually keep it on over here as I'm working on something, yeah. if, I, if I'm able to even be here to watch it. And I'm like, wait, how many people are on this thing? <laughs> like, yeah. But, uh, no, uh, I, you know, it took me too long to get you back on here for this. And part of that was because I hadn't had a chance to read or even page through Whitechester. And I didn't want to have, so Grim, what's it about? Have you read? Nope, not at all. <laughs> I didn't. <feel> right. <laughs> right. There were a lot of people saying, why hasn't Grim been on your show? Did you, did you, did you have a falling out? Apparently, I'm having falling outs with everybody. It's great. DM James, you, I don't know. It's like uh, uh, it's, it's, it's great how the gossip engine works, isn't it? <laughs> right? But uh, no, it was literally just a matter. Of, I had not had a chance to even page through the book, and I didn't want to sit here and be like, so you wrote this book about zombies. Uh, <laughs> what, how's that going for you? And, I and see yeah. it has chapters and pages. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I at least wanted <laughs> well, to have a little bit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Uh, so, so talking about that, let's uh, so uh, let's get this out there. So, the esoteric order of nerdity. So, he helped write a few entries. So that's good. Yes. I'm glad. Again, I'm appreciate everybody that stepped up to help you. And yeah. uh, Patty's parlor says, "I would love to draw for you, Grim." Now, this the reason I started this one is because I know a couple years ago, I, I tried to help promote, and I even back that you have this this uh, an indie artist charity. We'll call it. Are you still doing that? And if so, please uh, please talk a little.